So, life happened and you have to break your lease early. What are you gonna do? Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Philip. And we teach you what you need to know about being a grown up. Because adulting shouldn't suck. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications when we put out some new videos. In the comments below, let us know if you have ever had to break your lease or not. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get out of an apartment lease. Oh yeah. Lucky for us, we haven't had to do this very often. For me, I've only actually had to do this once, and that's because I voluntarily got relocated for a new position in the military. Getting relocated if you're in the military is one of the ways that you can break your lease without any penalties. All I had to do was show my landlord my military relocation orders and give them a move out date. That simple. Now obviously, you don't wanna go around breaking rental leases all over the place because it's really expensive. With all the fees and penalties, it's gonna look bad on your rental history and it's gonna make it harder for you to rent somewhere else in the future. But we get it, life happens and sometimes you have to end your lease before the lease is up. So what do you do? Now, before we get started, let's talk about that rental agreement that you had to sign. You have to understand that the rental agreement that you signed is a legally binding contract between you and the landlord that says you will pay however much money to them across the duration of that agreement. So if you sign a 12 month rental agreement with your landlord and rent is $1,000 a month, which is cheap, you're saying in a legal contract that you're going to pay the landlord $12,000 over the course of a year, right? So $1,000 a month, 12 months, it's $12,000. But what is a landlord supposed to do if you need to break the lease after seven months and you've only paid $7,000 out of the $12,000 that you agreed to pay? Are they just supposed to lose out on that last $5,000? Mm. Unfortunately, the landlords won't eat the loss if you just up and leave. They can legally come after you and take you to court for the remaining amount of rent that you owe them. So before you just up and leave, there's a few things that you should do. First thing you're gonna wanna do is check your rental agreement and see what the early termination clause says. Because sometimes they're gonna have things in there like if you break your lease early, you're gonna forfeit your security deposit or you might owe one or more months of rent to cover however long the apartment is gonna be sitting there vacant or you might owe 90 days worth of rent. So there could be a lot of different things that are in that lease agreement, so make sure you read it. After you read your agreement, the next thing that you should do is speak with your landlord and tell them that you need to break your lease early and why. In a perfect world, they'll allow you to break the lease early and market your apartment for a new tenant, but that's not always the case. If you had a new applicant ready to apply for your apartment that was credit worthy and had their finances in order, most reasonable landlords would allow them to apply for the apartment and then move in right after you. I actually had to do this with my wife's business, or I should say we had to do this, because uh, it was her business and she was signed onto a commercial agreement for her business, right? And we wanted to get out of there and I think she still had like another four years left on the lease. We found another person that was gonna buy her gym and then take over that lease and they were already credit worthy and they had the finances in order and so they just took over the lease and basically subleased it from us. Uh, without getting into a lot of details, we did that but on a commercial scale with the business. So it worked out really well in that case. Occasionally, landlords will allow you to sublet your rental. Subletting is where you do a rental agreement with someone else for your rental but your rental contract would be between you and the individual moving into your apartment and you would maintain the agreement between you and the landlord. A lot of college students do this when school is out and they go home for the summer and then they come back and move back into their dorm after summer is over. I, I mean, the example I gave too about my wife's gym, that's exactly what we did. We subletted to the new gym owner. We still had our original rental agreement with the landlord but um, you know, they took it over essentially, they paid all the bills, but if anything ever happened, it would have still come back on us, but we had a legal agreement, so it would have been fine. But moral of the story is, uh, you can do this as an individual, you can do it as a business, same thing applies. Yeah. Like Philip was saying, they sublet their apartment to students staying around campus for the summer, 
and then they move back in right before school starts. However, subletting is typically not allowed in most places, so make sure that you ask about it before you do it. Mm -hmm. You might get yourself in a lot of trouble if you yeah. just do it and then ask for forgiveness. Because if you do it and it's not allowed, you can get evicted. Yep, that's not good. Now, if your landlords aren't about any of these options, then there are a few things that you might be able to use if the situation applies to you. But these are going to be different based on the tenant laws that are in your state. So before you go this route, make sure that you check the tenant laws in your state. You can do this by simply Googling landlord's duty to re-rent in whatever state you live in. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the habitability standard. Landlords are required to make sure that the property is livable at all times. This means that there's always running water, there's heat, they have to perform repairs as needed and in a timely manner, and they have to follow the safety and health codes for the area that you live in. If the landlords are in violation of that standard, then you need to make a complaint in writing to the landlord and have whatever issues fixed. If the landlords refuse to fix these issues that violate the habitability standards in a timely manner, and every state will have a different definition of a timely manner, then you have the right to notify the landlord of your intent to break the lease. State law will determine how long you have to wait to move out till you can break the lease without any consequences, unless the safety violation was so bad that you have to move out immediately. All right, next we're going to talk about the breach of quiet or peaceful enjoyment. Mm. There are laws that restrict how often a landlord can enter your private residence, even though it's actually the landlord's property. They can't just show up unannounced and then go ahead and you know let themselves into your residence. In most states, landlords have to give you at least a 24-hour notice before they can legally enter your property that you're renting from them. Additionally, if the landlord fails to keep the property quiet by repeatedly ignoring your complaints, about these other tenants that are being loud or they have bad behavior, then you can actually contact your local, what is it, the uh, landlord tenant attorney. So you can talk about what the process would look like if you wanted to actually go and break your lease. If you join the military, you can break your lease early in every city and state in the U.S. for active military service. All you have to do is provide your military orders saying that you have to go somewhere for more than 30 days, and boom, your lease is broken early without any consequences. Once the landlord receives the notice, the lease will end in 30 days or at the end of the month. So if you need to break a lease and you don't have any other options, join the military. If you need a recruiter, let us know in the comments because we know some people. If none of these work for you, there are a few other options that you might have that are available based on the city and state laws of, of where you live. And at times, uh, you're allowed to move out for health and family reasons, like you need to go home and take care of your parents, or if you were a victim of domestic abuse or violence, harassment, stalking, or sexual assault. It's important to remember that when you sign a lease, you're signing a legally binding contract with the landlord. So if there's a possibility that you might have to move out early, then we suggest getting a month-to-month -month lease or doing a three- or six-month lease option. All right, so as a recap, if you sign a lease, there's a high chance that you're going to have to pay some kind of fee if you have to break it early. So obviously, it's best to stay there for the whole duration of your lease. But, you know, we understand that life happens. So if it does happen or when it does happen, make sure you check the laws for your landlord's duty to re-rent. You can do that. By, like Philip said, by Googling landlord's duty to re-rent in whatever state you live in. Or, you know, after you do that, it's a really good idea to call a local landlord tenant attorney that's in your area. And a lot of times you can actually talk to them for free and they're just going to tell you, or if you tell them about your situation, they can give you guidance for free and uh, let you know some kind of direction you need uh, without actually paying for their services. So, you know, hit them up and try and get something for free if that's the situation that you're in or you know like philip said you can join the military to get out of your lease yeah if you like this video hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe in the comments below let us know if any of these uh things you can do apply to you hopefully it helps we'll see you in the next video